Available on the WWE Network on both 918 and 925. <coughs> the reason being is the nine-year-running USA drama Suits is coming to an end in the final two episodes airing on the aforementioned dates. Which is really funny because WWE could just hold NXT off from going to TV for two weeks and air it the same week AEW goes to TV. Nope. nope. We need those two Isn't weeks. It? Isn't that so fucking petty and stupid? It is. I almost wish Karma was the one biting WWE in the ass here where they had locked themselves into it, but Suits did it and AEW was already running, so AEW got the second hour ratings. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right? Yeah, that oh that would be awesome. I know I know I would not go out of my way to switch from USA to the network. I'd probably just watch the second hour on the network to be honest. That that's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. I wouldn't even watch the first hour first just watch the just second the hour on the network. Right? <laughs> there you go. See you next deep free show. <laughs> Oh, talking about uh, shows you're not willing to watch on TV, pasty. We're moving into the ins and the outs. Yes. And one show I don't watch on TV is American Ninja Warrior. And why do we give a shit about that on our show? Well, I'll tell you why, pasty. Thank you for Thank asking. Thank you for telling me. Former American Ninja Yarn. Warrior, K. Casey Catanzaro is rumored to be leaving WWE due to a back injury. Hold on, folks. This is another story that kept developing through the weeks. <laughs> Casey signed with WWE in January of 2018 when she worked the May Young Classic yep, Tournament. I remember and, that. And I was like, why is a yeah. ninja warrior in wrestling? That doesn't make sense. She did good, though. And she participated in the Women's Royal Rumble match earlier this year. However... Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports, as of Tuesday, Catanzaro has not left the company. There oh my God, are her and Kylie Ray the same person? They could be. We don't know. <laughs> I've never seen the two of them in the same room together. Let's have them face each other on Ninja Warrior to make sure. <laughs> Um, there is said to be something to the original story, as there were definitely rumors on her departure going around NXT over the weekend, and they didn't just poof out of nowhere. However, Ken Zaro remains under contract as of this week, and is still listed on the official NXT roster. Oh, Vince ain't letting anybody go for any reason. Come on now. Now... Now, Pasty, somebody who might know a thing or two about this was actually talked to, which is what should happen in these situations. So, Ricochet, when asked directly about Casey, who, by the way, is his girlfriend, IRL. Oh, are they going to tag team now? Well, I mean, will she kiss him in the ring? That's the real test. Um,. But Ricochet spoke br bluntly about his real-life girlfriend. He said, she's still with the company, she's not retired at all, and she's not injured. He goes on to say, it's a tough sport, and we're all hurting, but there's nothing wrong with her. Is she dead? Is she dead? Might be. <laughs> then when asked if he believes that she will ever wrestle again, he said, I don't know. She's very family-oriented and wants kids, so she doesn't know if being on the road so much is for her. Now, for me, I'm already in too Whoa. deep. I'm on the road all Whoa. the time. She loves wrestling, and she loves it here in WWE, and she's so good at it, so it's a very tough decision for her. Uh, basically, if I'm reading between the lines, what I hear is... She is a super athletic, super outgoing She's not a woman wrestler, who likes she doesn't to try like wrestling. a lot of things. I, I don't even say that she doesn't like wrestling, but I, I really don't think she likes the schedule is what it sounds mm. like to me. I don't think she wants to be a wrestler, mm -hmm. you know, 23 hours of the day. I think she wanted to be a wrestler maybe eight hours of the day. Mm. You know what I mean? And maybe just a couple of days and not on a full-time basis. A couple of days. I Let's just do wanted to do that tournament. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Either way, yeah. you know, I was, I always was like, why? She, I, I don't like when they bring other sports people into wrestling. No, but I thought she did a good job. She's very she athletic, is. super talented, super strong. As we mentioned when we talked about the Mae Young Classic, she is the first ever woman to complete 
the uh, American Ninja Warrior course, that's that's not something to just fucking dismiss, okay? Because I can guarantee you that there is a huge percentage, and I would dare say 99% of the female wrestlers in WWE, let alone other wrestling companies, who would never be able to finish that right. course. They're, but they're yeah, two no, different taking things, bumps is very right? different than a fucking American Ninja Warrior course. Two it takes an enti- entirely different kind of person. Yeah, two very different things, and and they they should all be proud of what they can yeah. do. And you got to assume somebody who'd run American Ninja Warrior would push themselves and push themselves to no ends to the point where they would injure themselves in wrestling on a serious thing. You know what I mean? No they ends. Don't wanna they don't want to stop. They don't want to. You know, it's no endless. ends. Yes, but Rob Van Dam confirmed to Frightful recently that he's extended his contract with Impact until January, so it appears the whole effing show will be staying on the promotion for the next few months. He signed with Impact Wrestling this spring, and his contract was said to originally expire in October. Well, I mean, I'm glad. Impact is where ECW goes to die. <laughs> or or to thrive, either to, one. To, to, to something. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, something I, I didn't know where to put in here, but I read and I, I whatever. It's because they're a Canadian based uh, uh, company and weed's legal in Canada and so they can all smoke and wrestle. There you go. Um, RVD did have a recent interview where he talked about a lot of his injuries that he has and he has a lot building up. None of them are like career ending injuries, but they're all building on each other he and needs stuff. DDP yoga. So Rob. Is well, he's currently going down to uh, Mexico to get stem cell Ooh, treatment. That worked for Edge, which is um, yeah, it's the same kind of treatment Edge has had. Uh, Brian Cage has had made a new pizza Hulk place Hogan for Cartman. Had. So many people have had this, and it seems to be just fucking amazing. And I'm just going to drop a little bit of my own feelings here. I support the stem cell research and stem mm-hmm. cells, um, what, whatever it may be. Now, one thing I want to say is uh, Florida just started legalizing it. And I think there's only like one or two states that actually will do it in America now. So you have to go down to Mexico to do most of it. You can bet your ass it's not Again, the states that won't allow abortion. <laughs> yeah. But again, this is Mexico, and I just have to share a short story about the fact that Hulk Hogan uh, died on a uh, medical table in Mexico when he was getting stem cell injections because they injected him with, and I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. No, it wasn't. But they injected him with something. I don't remember what it's called, but it's something that wrestlers have been using for years, even in the States. Um, it's, it's a normal thing that helps you out. I, I don't remember what it was called, but anyways, turns out he was allergic to it. He didn't know he was allergic to it. Hogan doesn't speak Spanish. Nobody in the hospital spoke English. <laughs> His wife noticed he was dying. <laughs> so she kind of alerted people. Uh, they got some stuff done, took care of it, and uh, brought him back to life, thank heavens. And going forward, he still did a few more treatments down there, but they didn't use the drug that he almost died on. But now he's exclusively doing it in Florida. But he swears, so many people swear it's by it. It's still coming from Mexico, though. But <laughs> it's, it's from um, Florida. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cuba. <laughs> Cuba. Uh, but the thing is, is it's super temporary. It's almost like crack where it's awesome for, like, 27 days, 35 days, and then you're super sore again. Well, it's so, still not a perfect science. It's getting there. No. But you know what? The more research, if people would fight, mm-hmm. quit fighting the research, we'd know more about it yep. and maybe help. Um, that was my little uh, soapbox to yell on. Go ahead and puff on to the next thing, Pasty. Or, or not. Fuck it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Have a good week, folks. Goodbye. Love you. WWE announced Friday that two new talents had reported to the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida to begin working for NXT. Jorge Bali and Edgar Lopez. Bali is known to pro wrestling fans as El Hijo de Fantasma or King Cuerno of Lucha Underground fame. He's a second generation talent. His name translating to Son of Fantasma. 
No way! Lopez, on the other hand, is a former soccer player from the Monterey Institute of Technology's Borjeos Salvajes team. He worked nice. the December 2018 WWE tryouts in Santiago, Chile. Oh, if I'm putting my money on somebody, it's on the fucking Monterey Institute of yeah, Technology, boy. Yeah, he'll quit boy. faster than Cat and Zaro. Not- Arm drive! Oh, man, not Arm the drive. fucking... Not the second generation Lucha Libre boy. <laughs> He's just a schmuck. Um, yeah, don't expect old uh, Borrejo's uh, Salavejas to last long in <laughs> WWE. He's he's not making it to the main roster. I'd be surprised to see him on NXT TV. Yeah, I don't think so. But of course, King Cuerno, El Hijo del Fantasma. I know him. Jorge, Jorge Bole, whatever you want to call him, he this motherfucker easily is making a name for himself in NXT mm. for sure, if not the main roster. He's not going no, anywhere. And you'll probably see him on NXT Badass. very soon. Badass. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see him. And basically, there is another possible addition to the Wednesday show, at least this according to Squared Circle Sirens. 30, or not 38, 28-year-old <laughs> Scarlett Bordeaux is currently at... <sighs> it's a rough fucking day, I know. Pasty. We're, We're almost done. I almost get, get to go smoke a cigarette. Are we almost done? I am so close. Okay. All right. We're going to go again. You want to type edit at the beginning of another? I'm holding my dog. But basically, another possible addition to the Wednesday show, according to Squared Circle Sirens, could be the 28-year-old Scarlett Bordeaux, who received a tryout. We can confirm that former Impact Knockout Scarlett Bordeaux is currently at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida today, and has been seen inside the ring for what sources tell us is a tryout, they reported. Bordeaux appeared in WWE multiple times from 2014 to 2016 as a member of <sighs> the Rosebuds. <laughs> Scarlett's hey, last match for Impact Wrestling. Roman was one of those. So was Simon Gotch. Yeah, look, look, look what it's brought those two guys. <laughs> uh, Scarlett Bordeaux's last match for Impact Wrestling was at Code Red, which was an Impact Plus exclusive held in May in conjunction with the House of Glory promotion. Bordeaux most recently competed in AAA's Triple Mania in Mexico, where she teamed with Sammy Guevara in a failed attempt to win the promotion's mixed tag team championship and, probably most notably at this point, was disgustingly groped by an asshole fan during that match when she was outside Mm -hmm. of the ring. Well, if she was indeed at that tryout, I'm assuming she'll be on WWE TV very soon. I can just see her to pair them up with um, Bizarro World Charlotte Flair. Can't, can't, Bizarro, can't remember Bizarro. her name right now, but you know who I'm talking about. Bizarro, Bizarro. I have fucking no idea. Just the, the one in the Seth Rollins Becky Lynch match. Bizarro, <laughs> Bizarro. With, with uh, King Corbin. The what? fuck? The, the mixed gender match: Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, Corbin, and what's her fuck? Is that coming, no, or did that, that happen? No, that I don't fucking know. It was when Brock Lesnar got the title back. You fuck. I still don't even well, know. Then, I don't I'm know. Fuck. Can't we just it's, not I know? Don't, Why has everything remember. gotta be a big deal with you? Hey, it's 9.35 and time for your legal news. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 9.35, it's way later than that, because we behind! Uh, yeah, but this will be quick yeah. and I'll sign off. What do we, what do we got? This is a good one, Basie. I'll let you take this one. I like it. <laughs> Trinesha Biggers, better known as Rockicon in Impact from 2008 to 09 and Lucha Libre USA from 2010 to 2012 is no longer running the ropes, but now appears to be running from the law. Oh no! Crime Stoppers of El Paso says that Khan is one of El Paso's <laughs> most wanted fugitives for the week of August 25th, 2019. Oh, I watched that episode <laughs> of the reality show. Um, she just barely beat out um, Jose Cuervo. <laughs> oh man, it was close. 
But they, but they, the, her torch man got snuffed. Go She's ahead. listed under the name of Trinisha Sims, aka Trinisha Biggers or Trinisha Williams, and has been charged with interference with child custody. No other information regarding Khan is given.